Hey everyone, and welcome to my January wrap up. I did a pretty good job in January of getting a whole lot of things read. These were my stats. I'm really, really happy with these, especially considering I had a pretty small TBR and January was a rather stressful month. So these stats are really, really good. I'm really, really happy with that. And with that, Let's get into exactly what I read and what I thought about it. First things first, I'm going to mention the ghosts of Cyclops. So this was a, a comic that was sort of continuing on with this idea of the time displaced X-Men I keep on talking about. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I always enjoy the, this series. I really love exploring more of Scott and how people react to Scott, including humans and mutants alike. How young Scott is dealing with the, out, uh, like the fallout from older Scott's work. All of this stuff. Really, really enjoyed it. And it worked out at a four star. I then went on to read Dawn of X volume 9. This one is obviously the ninth one in the series so I can't tell you much about it but it's the current X-Men run. I have been loving reading this and this one was no exception. I really really enjoyed this one again and the fallout of some of the previous volumes. I'm really enjoying seeing all of these different teams and how they're all working together and how it's all sort of like interweaving with each other. Things like this. Really really enjoyed it so again four stars. I then read Pretty Deadly and this one was a bit of a disappointment for me to be honest because we're following like the daughter of death kind of thing but it's set in like this wild west place which is fine it sounded really really interesting I usually quite like this author's writing but this time it just didn't work for me because it was a bit too metaphorical and we weren't following the thing I wanted us to follow essentially it was just very confusing and I wasn't that into it to be honest so I only gave it 3.5 stars because it was reasonably enjoyable but it just wasn't for me in the end. I then finally finished Spider-Verse. I started this back in December and I got through the main run and then I just had the sort of one shots with all the different various Spider-Men essentially and all of their like bits how it all weaved into the main storyline left essentially and I was gonna sort of maybe leave this until um, Into the Spider-Verse 2 came out but then I was like no I have time I'm gonna read it. So I managed to also read that one. I really enjoyed this. Um, the only story I didn't enjoy was the one where two Peters try to find a third Peter and it went a bit body horror and he turned into a giant humanoid spider and that just freaked me out quite frankly it was it sent shivers down my spine and I think it was supposed to but in that sense it definitely worked but it just creeped me out essentially but I really really enjoyed the rest of this I loved seeing all of these different spider people working together and what they were doing throughout this spider-verse event I should mention that spider-verse is about all of the different multiversal spider-men having to team up together to stop a family of ancient beings killing and eating them all essentially and I really really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars and so so glad I finished it because I was wondering when it was going to get done. It was hanging over my head and I'm so glad I finally finished it. I then also read volume 6 of Fables and this one is basically once upon a time but for adults in the sense that a whole load of fairy tale characters have been taken out of fairyland via a curse and have now been dumped in New York. Only they all know who they are and this one's following little boy Blue as he's trying to figure out who the adversary is who caused this curse and just him travelling around all the different sort of fairy tale lands that are left and I really enjoyed this one. I didn't see the reveal coming as to who the adversary was so that was really fun. I really enjoyed all of these different like bits where we're also following Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk and what he's doing and Thumbelina. Really really enjoyed that bit as well. That was really good fun. I just really enjoyed generally like the expanding of the universe and what all of the different fables as they are called are doing things like this really really enjoyed it and again four star read then onto a physical book i read i read skullduggery pleasant bedlam this is obviously the 12th book in the skullduggery pleasant series which is all about skullduggery pleasant and valkyrie kane who solve magical crimes and stop the world from ending via various magical threats and this one was great this one felt like we were back on track for Derek Landy and back to what Skullduggery is all about essentially with a whole load like more banter it felt a bit more like Valkyrie and Skullduggery were working more together in this one and then just the plot twists and the character death started again and all of the rest of it was epic I do have a full spoilery reading vlog as well if you are interested in that so I don't have to 
shout about it here as well i'll leave a link to it up above but i really really enjoyed this one the ending was intense and there's like four different cliffhangers <laughs> literally there's like four different cliffhangers and plot twists in the last like 50 pages and it just left me screaming if you want to hear more of my spoilery thoughts and everybody else's spoilery thoughts we do have a live show for this on hannah's channel which i'll leave a link to down below on february the 6th which is this coming sunday so if you want to hear more of our full spoilery thoughts all of our ideas of what's coming next all the rest of it please do check that out on sunday the 6th and i don't think i mentioned it but i gave this one 4.5 stars i then read as old as time this one is a beauty and the beast retelling which asks the question what if Belle's mother cursed the beast and this is also part of the twisted tale series which is a series following all of the different um various different disney characters and each one focuses on a different like film and it's asking the question what if one thing changed this one is a what if Belle's mother cursed the beast and i quite enjoyed this one it was only a 3.5 star on core pile i was expecting it to be a four but 3.5 is still a pretty good rating for me and this one I found very very interesting. I really liked seeing how Belle's mother worked into this one and how she came to be cursing the beast in the first place. I really liked seeing um, her originally and how she sort of grew as a character throughout and how she came to the decision to curse him. I really liked Belle as well and how um, resourceful she was and how caring she was. I really liked as well how they tied the... Um, like servants and things like this like mrs potts and cogsworth and people like that into this story as well really liked all of that i like the plot twist of this one i really like the dark turn it took as well that was very very interesting and i gave it 3.5 stars i then also read dinosaurs rock by ducky pointer i was expecting this to come out on the second which is well the day before this goes up the day i'm filming this but it actually arrived like last Saturday so like the final weekend of January so I was like well I'm not waiting because Dougie is my favourite bassist he's in McFly I'm a massive McFly fan and I just I really enjoyed this one this one is obviously a kids book and it's an introduction to dinosaurs and things like this and like fossil hunting and all the rest of it with also some dinosaur jokes and things like this and it was really really accessible I really liked the illustrations throughout it as well and how it made it really really simple because even my dumbass brain understood what was going on I admit that when we got to the cosmic timeline that was a little bit confusing when we're talking about like um like the timeline of the universe and if we put it into a year what's happening in each month um that was slightly confusing but to be fair I was interrupted quite often while I'm trying to read that bit so not really the book's fault but I really enjoyed this one I really liked how accessible it was and I do think this is perfect for any young kid at about seven eight ish who's really interested in dinosaurs or just really likes Jurassic Park like me it was really good fun and i gave it five stars i am admittedly biased but i had a great time reading it and then the final thing i read was an unkindness of ghosts and this was my audiobook for the month and unfortunately this one did not work out for me as well as i'd hoped because i was sitting there thinking well it's a sci-fi i really like sci-fi i like the idea of rebellion um i'm always here for any sort of neurodivergent rep in books and this had all of it but it was just that tad bit too metaphorical for me and when it tips too far into metaphor it just goes straight over my head i had problems with um throughout uni with this as well um when things just tip a little bit too far into metaphor it just goes straight over my head and i just miss most of it quite frankly it's just part of my brain it just is how my brain works and i found that this one was that tad bit too metaphorical and i just didn't understand what was going on for like half of it because we're following a few too many storylines in my mind and I also didn't get why Asta cared at all about um, Giselle I didn't get that whatsoever I didn't understand why she liked Theo either well I understood why she liked Theo but I didn't really get the romance vibe off them whatsoever I was confused about how the ship ran like physically I understood the hierarchy here but I didn't understand how the ship ran I was very confused on that one and I just didn't understand the ending whatsoever. I was just a bit like, but you've just caused the rebellion, which I thought was going to happen ages ago in this book. And then you escape. I was very confused by the ending. The ending confused me. If you've read the book, let me down, uh, know down below. 
and maybe explain it to me because I was just very confused. I was very confused. Don't get me wrong, I really appreciated the autism rep in here as well as the LGBTQIA plus rep because that's always needed in sci-fi. We are getting more um, people of colour representation but I just didn't understand most of it quite frankly. Also if you are planning on reading this book please do check out the trigger warnings. I've obviously written quite a few here but I've probably missed some because there are so many of them. This book is incredibly triggering in a lot of ways. It's an incredibly tough read in a lot of places as well so please be warned if you're going to read this book look out full trigger warnings because there are hundreds of them and quite frankly it is a very uncomfortable read. But in total I think I gave it 3.5 stars. Yeah, I gave it 3.5 stars because it was a very important topic, but I was just still a bit confused. I didn't understand what was going on fully. And that is the end of this wrap up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, tell me what you've read this month. I'd love to know. Or if you don't have that much time, leave me a book related emoji down below to let me know that you were here. I'll also leave a link down below to all my social media if you want to check it out, including to the comic book sanctum, which is my website dedicated to Marvel Comics. Or if you're more interested in books, uh, bookish merch and bookish bullet journal stuff, I'll also leave a link down below to my Redbubble and Etsy store, which sells that stuff. Or if you're just interested in more of my videos, please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video. But till next time everyone, bye!